right, thanks everybody for joining. So um, my name is Dave Muir. I've been working uh, with Black Duck Technologies for the last seven years. And some of you may know we, uh, we were acquired by Synopsys late last year. Synopsys is uh, uh, building a business unit of um, a suite of software security tools. And Black Duck happens to be part of that, uh, that suite. So I work in our uh, business development alliances team uh, working with great partners like Red Hat. And we've built an integration with OpenShift, which I'll go through in detail today and uh, try to do a demo. Yesterday, I, I presented um, container security in the front there and just sort of a quick review. There's a lot of different security tools out there. What I'll be talking about is the middle piece here, software composition. Software composition analysis is something fairly new uh, that's been coined in the market, but it's been around for a while. Uh, Black Duck's been doing it for uh, 14 years. And it's actually trying to find the open source software that you're bringing in to your applications or to your container images. Um, so that's what we'll be talking about today. And so let's dive into the architecture of our integration. Um, last year, we delivered version one of this integration. We're calling it OpSite, if you hear that term. Um, and about three days ago, we just um, delivered version two. So within an OpenShift environment, OpenShift has an integrated registry, or you can pull images from uh, other external registries, whether that be Artifactory, you know, GCP, whatever. Um, and Black Duck has a couple components to it. One is our huge knowledge base that typically sits in our data center. So uh, it has over a petabyte of data. We've been collecting the data for 14 years. It's essentially um, all the open source files that, are, that we've collected, um, over 10,000 sources, uh, and a lot of metadata around that open source as well. So think about, you know, we have all the versions of OpenSSL, Apache Struts, we support, we have over 80, plus programming languages that we can support when we're scanning and identifying open source. So the knowledge base is uh, typically in the cloud. It can be delivered on-prem. Uh, but uh, the second piece to the architecture is what is called the hub. The hub is the web application that stores all the results um, uh, after you do scans. And it produces a lot of different metadata, which I'll talk about um, when I get to the demo. Within the integration, we basically um, are looking, we're a actual project within OpenShift, so when you install it, it creates a project and creates a set of containers. Uh, a couple of those containers are looking at the OpenShift, the Kubernetes API, the image stream API, which is specific to OpenShift, and then the pod creation API, which is a native Kubernetes API as well. So whenever an image hits those uh, events, it's created, you do an S2I, uh, you instantiate it in a pod, our processors will find that image and speak to another core container that then launches a scan of that image. And essentially what's happening is we're exporting that image to a tar file and we're scanning that tar contents. Black Tuck scanner is basically a one line command that you can scan really any files, binary source code, for it to detect the open source within that scan target. There's two pieces actually to this um, uh, pod here, this pod right here. Uh, the actual scanner that's instantiated when it's ready, when it uh, gets an image event. And then the image getter is really the only um, privileged container running in this infrastructure because it needs to do that Docker sock connection to do the Docker pull. There is um, an example of uh, using a different image facade. If you want to use another container, it's pretty easy to swap these things out because this architecture is very modular. Uh, I'll point you in the right direction and basically it, it goes and gets the container contents and does a copy instead of a Docker pull. So there's various ways you can implement the, the image getter uh, because it, be, it essentially calls two APIs to let the scanner know that it's ready to be scanned. 
The scan is essentially taking um, what we call fingerprints of all the files within that tar file. Uh, so it goes through all the layers, takes um, these signatures or fingerprints of the actual files, the dates of the file, the paths of the, of the uh, directory structure, and sends that to the hub, and those signatures go up to do a matching algorithm in the knowledge base. The knowledge base then sends down the matches to the hub, and the hub builds what we call the bill of materials or the component list, which I'll show you here in a minute, of, op of the open source it found. And then along with that, we get known vulnerabilities, we get licensing information, as well as operational information. Now you only have to scan once, unless you change an image. Um, and after a scan, the hub and Black Tech are continuously monitoring your image content. So you basically have an inventory of your open source components. And um, if you watch the duck here, if new vulnerabilities are published, they will be, um, the information will be pushed back into OpenShift. So I didn't mention, uh, after a scan is complete, we annotate and label different things within OpenShift, and I'll show you that in the demo. We annotate pods, I mean label pods and annotate images, and um, also label images. We also uh, can be installed as an option with a Prometheus master. We're pushing all sorts of stats to uh, certain ports, and you can use Prometheus or you can use your own implementation to look at those ports and get statistics, like what scans are running, for example, and I'll show you some of that as well. All right, so let's go to a demo. Um, the internet's been kind of fun lately, so I have some canned screens, but I'll try to, try to make the internet work. One thing to note is um, this integration is open source. Black Duck Hub in the knowledge base is a product. It's a subscription base. So once you purchase Black Duck Hub, you can get this integration for free. Um, and we have an upstream and downstream project. The upstream project, the open source project, is uh, labeled Perceptor. So if you go to Black Duck's GitHub site and search on Perceptor, you'll see all sorts of projects related to it. Um, and this project is a sort of an example of how you can uh, take that image getter container and swap it out with something else that doesn't use privileged containers if you're interested in doing that. But it's just an example. The example shouldn't be put in production, but, um, but it'll, it'll guide you through how to create and use another container for that actual install, for that image getter. So a lot of good stuff out in GitHub. Here's a look at what uh, Black Duck would provide in after a scan occurs. So scans usually take minutes. Um, it depends on what you're scanning. If it's one file, a scan will take less than 30 seconds. If it's an application, it typically takes around a minute or so. If it's a container, containers are a lot bigger. Some containers are. It usually takes five minutes. If it's taking longer than five minutes, you can scale up your hub, uh, we've got job runners and um, horizontally scaling capabilities to make those scan times go down. But scan results give you things like the list of open source components down to the actual version. Versions are very important, specifically for understanding what license is tied to that version, as well as what security vulnerabilities are known to that version. Um, and then there's things like operational risk, which are also version specific, but also uh, specific to the project. So for example, in this case, there's 18 newer versions available of rsync that I could be using. Um, the project's stable, but there's only two contributors. So that might cause some concern. You wanna make sure your open source projects are healthy and they have a, a, a pretty rich community around it. That's operational risk. License risk is more for those who are interested in distributing applications and they don't want their IP leaked. For example, if I'm, I've got an external distribution um, and I have GPL licenses, that's a high risk because the GPL license has obligations that says if you use this, 
you have to open source your application. Lawyers obviously don't like that, and commercial companies. But you can change the distribution here to be internal, GPL is fine. Or if you're actually creating your own open source project, uh, that would be fine as well. Now security risk, uh, let's see if the internet's gonna work for me here. I think I actually have it, oh yeah. So security risk is the known vulnerabilities for that open source component and version. Uh, we use the National Vulnerability Database, but those results tend to be uh, slow and also don't really give a lot of actionable information. Um, the other thing that you see here is that I've got three vulnerabilities for Bash, 4246, and we're also pulling information from the Red Hat errata data. So Red Hat has already patched these vulnerabilities, and since we've got that feed, we, you know, this is the default view after a scan. You, we don't alert our customers that they have to worry about these vulnerabilities. Uh, but what we do also look at are the things that Red Hat doesn't have insight into, and that's the application layer, the, the de dependencies that uh, developers are pulling in that aren't Red Hat curated open source. And so that's sort of the complementary nature that Black Duck provides uh, uh, with Red Hat. Uh, let me see if I can pull in. Let's see if I can do a search here. So we'll do a search for CVE 2017-563. Um, you don't have to scan things within Blacktuck to get open source information. You're basically connected to our knowledge base. So for example, if I wanted to search on components and be proactive um, in terms of what components I wanna use, you can do that. There's also IDE plugins, Chrome plugins, that give developers insights into the things that they're looking at as they're developing and pulling down open source software. Let's see if the internet's working here. So if I click this link, this link is BDSA 2017, it maps to this CVE. BDSA is Black Duck Security Advisory. It's the um, enhanced vulnerability data that we provide to our customers and look like the internet's behaving. So it's things like, what's the workaround? This was fixed, here's the actual GitHub location of the fix, you can see the code itself. Here's the exploit code, here's the technical information. So we wanna provide more actionable information to our, to our customers. Um, doesn't look like it's working, but I'll try to get back to that. Now, so from a OpenShift perspective, there's two things that we're pushing back into OpenShift after a scan occurs. One is the vulnerability information. So is this image vulnerable? Is this pod vulnerable? And how many components are vulnerable? The second thing is uh, policy management. So policy management in Black Duck, and take this screen, gives you the ability to create all sorts of policy rules based on conditions, open source and project conditions. So for example, I can create a blacklist of open source components. I can create project specific conditions, component conditions. Uh, so for example, if I go back to my list of components and filter on the policy violation, do that, okay. violation, it's, it's thinking about it. Yep, the internet's not working very well. There is a component in here that's on my blacklist. So basically what that means is this project is in uh, violation. So what that means within OpenShift is that we are uh, then labeling pods with this information. So you can see here uh, in this Node.js image that I uh, created a little while ago. Uh, it is in violation. Um, you can have multiple images per pod. So there's an overall status and then there's a specific image violation status as well. You can see how many components, there's one component that has a policy violation. Um, so this is through the UI or you can um, actually query it. So most OpenShift operators like to query I can do an o OC describe. Let's see if the internet's working here. And I can do either pods or images. 
and use that label. This is actually where the integration stops. We've had a lot of discussions on, hey, what do we do next? How do we use these labels? I've seen some of our customers uh, query for those labels in the CI CD process and then auto promote images to different environments like Sage or Tech. Uh, but the internet actually did return some stuff and you can see the labels here on this pod as well. Um, if I go back and let's see if we can try to look at the image here. We do the same labeling with images, but we also annotate them. So if I go to latest and annotate and see the annotations, we've worked with uh, Red Hat on this specification actually. So you can see some specific image annotations within OpenShift. This is specific for OpenShift. Uh, you can't really get this with Kubernetes. They don't have that, uh, that concept yet, uh, but they may, they may in the future. So, so that's how we sort of uh, push that information back into OpenShift. Now the integration is uh, continually watching. The core piece is pinging the hub every 30 minutes. The hub is pinging the knowledge base every hour. This, this can be configurable. So when new vulnerabilities come out, we are pushing new vulnerability information every hour. Uh, then the actual core piece will receive that event and push and re-annotate and re-label uh, re those pods and images. So you're no more than a couple hours away from understanding if a new vulnerability hits the, um, the media, how many new, uh, how many uh, images are affected by this, by this vulnerability. Our legacy product actually, and some of our competitors, would be months. So with this new architecture that we've built over the last five years with the hub and with OpenShift, now it's, now it's a couple hours that you'll know if you're affected. So that is a deep dive on the architecture. Oh, thank you, people in the back. Thank you.